Right, so hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. In today's video, we're basically going to be scraping a real life website called Rightmove to basically learn how to get um, house prices across London. So basically, just to give you guys a brief overview, what Rightmove is, is a website where people usually list their houses when they're trying to sell them across the United Kingdom. And what we're basically going to be trying to do is scrape the prices of the properties that have previously sold. Um, as well as different uh, attributes of that property, such as the type of property, whether it's a flat or not, how many bedrooms, whether it's a leasehold or freehold, and um, the different dates for which um, these prices were listed as well. You can use this sort of data for a lot of useful stuff, such as analyzing it, plotting it across a map, etc, etc. But for this tutorial, we're just going to be learning how to scrape this data across London. Cool. So first things first, what you want to do is sort of get a rough idea for the website you're scraping, which in this case, this is very simple. It's just a HTML page, which has all the data that we need. And do you see that we also have pages at the bottom? So it's page one out of 40. So we know there's 40 pages worth of data to scrape. Now if I click on two, what you notice is that um, the thing that changes is the page equals two up here. So we can probably write some sort of loop that's able to increment this number by one all the way until we reach 40 so that we grab all of the data needed. Cool. So to start with, what we're going to be doing first is basically taking a look at this data when we scrape it. So I'm going to go into VS Code. And for this tutorial, you're going to be needing requests, which is um, should be part of your standard libraries within Python. You're going to be needing JSON, which also should be part of your standard libraries. We're going to be using beautiful soup, which you're going to have to install uh, by using pip. Beautiful soup. Uh, and then we're also going to be using pandas to basically format the data once we have downloaded it. Cool. So let me run this. And if you guys have run it so far without any errors, that means you are doing just fine. Cool. So first things first, what we want to do is actually grab the data from the page that we were looking at. So we want to grab it in its raw form. So I'm going to switch this to page one, and then I'm going to copy the direct URL for this data. And to get this data, we're going to use the requests library. So we're going to make a uh, get requests to this URL. And we're basically going to um, store this response in a variable called res which stands for response now if you do res we can see that the website returned the response 200 this means everything went okay there was no problems now we can look at the contents of that response by typing in uh, res.txt now if you look at the content uh, you'll see that you have house prices in london and then just a long list of things right so what this is, is just a string. You've got a quote at the start and a quote at the end. It's basically a string that will contain all of the content that was shown on the website in its raw form. Now, in order to be able to navigate through this, it's usually nicer to pass this data into a beautiful soup object. So we'll create a new variable called soup and then we'll pass this string that we've just gathered in the form of HTML into beautiful soup. So we'll do beautiful soup equals beautiful soup res and then We'll just run that now um oh forgot to do res.txt because res will only re return response 200 which is not going to work we need the content of that so if we run that we should see that it's run fine and now if we print out soup uh it will basically print out like a prettified version of the web page but what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to navigate the different elements within this um this soup object now so for example if we wanted to grab a link or if we wanted to grab an image, we're going to be able to do that without having to split on the text like before. So if we scroll through the site, let's try and see where this data that we're looking for actually is. So don't see it so far. Maybe we'll just do control F and like a pound sign, right? Because the pound sign surely has the prices. So if we do pound sign, okay, seems like we're getting to something around here. And what you can see is that you have a script tag, which is starting. And then you have all of the data stored in this uh, dictionary called results. Now, what we'll want to do is grab this dictionary called results, because if you can see, you've got the result counts, how many uh, properties were sold, if I'm not wrong, then the properties and more details. So you've got the address, the bedrooms, property type, images, uh, floor plan, and the transactions. So we obviously 
want to have all of that data and bear in mind this is just a data for page one so within this thing we know that our data lies within the script tag so that we're going to look for the script tag for now so we'll do soup dot find all script and what find all does is it will return a list of elements that um are belong to this element type so we're looking for script and it's basically returned a list of items that has script so let's look through these things and see um, what we're basically looking for is the script tag which will start with uh, hold on I'll just scroll up a bit here it should start with uh, window.preloaded state equals and then it should have results that's what we're looking for so I'm going to start from the bottom because it's close to the bottom so we'll start with minus one okay we can see that it says app config that's not the one do minus two that's the second last one okay and bingo that's exactly what we're looking for we're looking for the one that has the results right and if we scroll through we'll see that it has all of the data so display price and all that good stuff so what we want to do here is we only really want the uh, the dictionary or the object so all of the stuff before and after it kind of needs to go so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to say we want just the text from this script element we don't want the whole script element we just want the text when we run that we basically get a massive string which will just include the text of it and now we still need to get rid of this part right we only need the object so to get rid of that what we're going to do is we're going to split on space equals space which means it will split the string where there is a delimiter of space equals sign space and then we'll keep the last element or the first element of that list so we'll do dot split and then if you look at it now space equals space if i run it you'll see that if i do len here to show you the length of this list there's two elements in there the first element is the one we want to remove and the second one is the one we want to keep because we only want the dictionary right so we're going to only keep the second element by doing one now we have the second element we have the dictionary we can look through it and it's obviously closing as well which is great now it's in string format so we won't be able to access the results or anything else which is why we need to convert it into a proper dictionary so to do that we need to load this uh, json uh, in so we'll do json.loads and then run it like that now you can see instantly the quotes have disappeared and it looks like an actual j uh, an actual dictionary now that we can navigate through we can confirm this by doing square brackets results because results is one of the keys and if you run it we should see the results pop up and it and they do cool so first off what i'm going to do is give this a variable name i'm going to call this page data okay that should all get stored in there for now and then what i'm going to do next is let's look at page data quickly so what do we want we obviously need the results so let's go into results then we obviously need the basic details of the property. So it looks like all the property details are stored inside this list in the properties key. So let's do results and properties. And what we have here uh, is basically all of the properties, their address, uh, their transactions, as well as their basic details. So let's just look at property number one. What we can, let me open this in a new tab. What we can see here, is the basic details first so the address property type bedrooms images and all that stuff and then we have another list which is the transactions so basically these are all the prices and the dates a tenure and build type um, for which the property was listed on the site right so we're going to store these details as well just so that we have in-depth sort of information with us we're also going to be storing location because that can be quite useful cool so what we want to do now is uh we want to loop through each of these properties obviously so we don't want just one we want to loop through all of them so we're going to store this these pro the, this list of properties in a new variable and we'll call that page properties now that we have um, a new variable that stores all of the properties we can loop through it so we'll do for i in range zero comma length of page properties um what we're going to do is we're going to select the current property by doing property equals page properties i and this will basically be each of the individual properties that we're accessing so each element of this list 
then within that we're going to store the address of the property by doing property get address and then if there is no key called address we're going to automatically use the value na because otherwise we're going to our program is going to crash and it's going to say oh i couldn't find a key for address so to avoid that crash we basically use the get method and we say if the address key exists then use the value from the data else just use na as the default value so just to show you what's going to be happening here i'll do print address and if i run it as you can see it's printing the address for all of the properties that we had above now let's grab the other details as well. Um, let's do property type equals property dot get. Same thing again, property type, and then NA as the default value. And the reason why I know the keys is because I've already got I've explored this before. Um, if you want to find them yourself, it's quite easy as well. You can just look at the keys right here. So we've got address, property type, bedrooms, then we're going to need transactions, and then the location as well. That's how I'm grabbing them. So we've got property type for now as well, which is great. And then the last one, I think, is going to be, second last, is going to be bedroom. So property.get, uh, bedrooms, and then NA as the default. Uh, and then lastly, uh, location, which is going to be property.get, location uh and then as the default value we do na then we also need the um the transactions so transactions is going to be property .get and transactions now each property will most likely have its transactions because otherwise it wouldn't really make sense uh, so we're just going to assume that we don't need to give it a default value, which is why instead of doing dot get, just do square brackets and transactions. Cool. So we have basically all the basic data that we need. I think the only problem we're going to face right now is that location is going to result into another dictionary with a lat and a long. Now we'll do two more variables so that we store this data a bit more neat. So we'll do locations lat equals location. And then since it's a dictionary itself, we'll do dot get and we'll do lat and then the default value will be n a. Same thing for longitude as well. Location long and location dot get and then lng uh, and then na as the default value. Now if we do print location lat and location long, we'll get like neater values and we can store these as um, individual columns into the data frame later which should be a lot easier to analyze this data later on in the tutorial if we ever need to cool so let's look at the transactions now currently if you look at the transactions um just look at this in a new cell we'll just look at the transactions the last property that we're looking at it's not very neat to look at right so we obviously need each of these things to be in a column of their own and for each transaction that there is uh, the basic details of the property will duplicate like the address will duplicate itself over those rows the property type etc etc only things that will change is the is these four things so we'll do just that so for basically since this is a, a list we're going to have to iterate through this list of transactions and then store that data so first off what i'm going to do is create a new variable called full data here and that's just going to be an empty list this is where we're going to be storing all of the data we're scraping now since we're scraping since we're going through each transaction uh, for transaction in the transactions array that we just looked at we can write something like this where we go, where transaction is going to be each individual dictionary inside that list then we can just do a few variables like transaction date is equal to transaction oh, transaction dot get and that's going to be date sold uh default value na now obviously i can look at the keys down here but i have them listed on my second screen so it's all good um you guys can look at it if you need to learn but um, i'm just going to copy it across so transaction price equals transaction dot get display price default value na transaction 
tenure will be equal to transaction right here uh tenure and na and then lastly transaction new build is basically going to be a boolean which identifies whether the property is a new build or not so it's just going to be new build default value and a cool now that we have all of this data what we're going to have to do is take all of this data that we just prepared including the basic details and the transaction details and then append them to this list that we have so that we can then convert it into a pandas data frame and then export it as an excel file later so we can do that easily by doing full data append append will basically take whatever data we give it and attach it to the end of the list and then what we're going to append can be defined here so we're going to append a dictionary just going to have all of the keys that we want our data to have so we're going to have the address of the property we're going to have the property type which is in our variables above we're going to have the bedrooms the number of bedrooms which is also in the variable we have then we'll have the location lat location lat we'll have the location longitude location longitude uh, and then obviously we're not going to store the transactions because that's just a list of dictionaries it's not going to be great to look at instead we're going to store these details that we're um, looping through individually so we're going to do transaction date uh, it's going to be equal to transaction date transaction price transaction price um, Transaction tenure, transaction tenure, and then transaction new build, transaction new build. Cool. So if we've spelled everything right and we've done all the logic correctly right now, if I run this, we should get a full uh, list of valid data. Okay, so it's run correctly, which is exciting. Now, if you look at this full data list, it should be populated to the brim because we've just taken all the data we've scraped and formatted it nicely and put it in this um, in this list. Now we can simply do PD dot data frame, which is uh, the alias for pandas that we imported earlier, and then do for data as the argument. And what you'll get is if I zoom on a little bit here. What you get is a clean list which basically shows you all the details which are scraped. So for the address, 56 uh, Language, Muse, Hampton, Greater London, etc, etc. These are all the details that we scraped. The property type, rooms. Now you see that they duplicate quite a bit. And that's the, the reason is because there was different transactions that happen on different dates. Um, and you'll see the prices shift for that property. But you can obviously later aggregate the, that data so that you can just get the median or average price or transaction price etc but that's basically up to you um that should basically conclude the first part which is grabbing all the data from the first page um and storing it in a nice little format here the only thing i'd like to help improve is take this um transaction price and format it a little bit more because right now it's a string as it has the pound sign and the comma instead we should make it a float um, or an integer by removing the pound sign and a comma and then just converting it so we can do that by going into the where's the price so if we look at the transaction price what we can do here is basically some price we we'll do an if statement, we'll say if transaction price is not equal to NA, which means that it's a valid number, transaction price will be overwritten by the following. We'll do dot replace, we'll replace the pound sign with nothing, then we'll replace the comma with nothing, and then we'll cast it into a float. We might as well do a strip as well to get rid of any leading or trailing spaces. We run that, and if you look at the values now, it's a lot cleaner, and obviously it's now a float, so you can actually do numeric operations with it. Cool. So that's pretty much it for page one. Let's try and implement this so that it can scrape multiple pages now. So let's take all of the code that we had, 
and try and put it together. So what we have here, let's see. Um, going to get rid of this one. Let's put this down here. Put this up here. This down here. Copy that. Okay. So let's drop these off. Now we have all the codes in sort of one place. We should be able to see this better. So the only thing that really needs to change here is um, the response that we're getting each time. So we need to loop 40 times and basically increment this number one by one number each time. So we're getting new page data every time. So what I'm going to do here is just try and scrape, let's say, five pages of data. But you guys can do 40 for yours. So I'll do 4i in range. 1 comma 6 because I'm starting at 1 so I want it to be 5 pages that's why you got to do one extra I'm basically going to do an f string here and then I'll replace 1 with i what that's going to actually I'll change this to j because later on in the program we've got i so I don't want to confuse them so I'll do that j what that's going to do is basically take it's going to start at 1 then it'll go 2 3 4 and 5 and then it'll stop at 5 and that way we'll get 5 pages worth of data hopefully uh, I'm also going to move this full data variable to up here so that we don't we don't overwrite any of that data. And then we'll do a little prompt here. Just um, scraping page i out of 5. Right? So, sorry, j out of 5. Cool. So let's run this and we'll see if a uh, program has actually worked. And it's scraping fine so far. I'll give it a second. Hmm. It's taking quite a bit on the last one. Not sure if we have gotten rate limited there or if it's just a flaw in the code here. Scraping page four or five. Okay, I'm gonna quickly interrupt. Um, if it will even let me. Or I can try restarting the kernel actually and re running the code. Let's try it with, let's say, three pages. Three pages this time just to prevent maybe running into a rate limit. Okay, so this one worked just fine. I think. The reason why it was kind of slowing down is because right move realized we're passing quite a few requests to it quite quickly so it's slowing down um or throttling our requests by slowing down how quickly it's returning the data so if we look at now do pd dot data frame not data frame for data we have 246 rows uh let's go to how many pages did we do again did three pages Okay, so let's do page three. Uh, taking a second. This is what I was talking about. I think it's realized that we're making quite a few requests for my IP, so it's kind of throttled me um, in terms of usage. But in any case, you can confirm that this is correct by going into page three, or just um, clicking on this down here, going into page three uh it's updated and then going down to the last property on this list and then checking if that matches the end of your data frame so it should be 10 serene park gardens greenwich london 110 serene park yep this seems correct and there should just be two listings and there is just two listings that's perfect Cool. So that's exactly how you would scrape um, right move data in terms of uh, grabbing previous listing data or property data in general. Uh, if you guys have any ideas or any other tutorials you want me to do a link to this in terms of any data science or data analysis tasks, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of the day and I will see your beautiful faces in the next one. Peace. <laughs>